Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, we will be delving into the fundamental concepts and terminology associated with the Lambda service. You can also refer to these concepts in the official AWS documentation and the link will be available in the description box below. So let's get started. So in this video, I will be covering the following concepts function, trigger, event, execution environment, instruction set architecture, deployment package, runtime, layer, extension, concurrency, qualifier, and destination. We will be covering all these concepts related to Lambda functions. So first is function. So a function is a resource that you can invoke to run your code in Lambda. A function has code to process the events that you pass into the function or that other AWS services send to the function. So the arguments that are passed to the function are called events which we pass to the function when we call the function from various sources. The various sources could be like using the Lambda console or through Lambda API, Function URL, AWS SDK, or using AWS CLI, or can be from other AWS services. Then trigger, what is a trigger? A trigger is a resource or configuration that invokes a Lambda function. Triggers could be other AWS services that we can configure to invoke a function. So to invoke a Lambda function, we we use a trigger which is a resource or configuration event source mapping could also be configured as a trigger to invoke lambda function event source mapping is a resource in lambda that reads items from a stream or queue and invokes a function now what is an event let us see in detail now an event is a json formatted document that contains data for a Lambda function to process. The Lambda runtime converts the event to an object and passes it to the function code. When we invoke a function, we determine the structure and contents of the event. These are some of the examples that I took from the AWS documentation. So this is an example of a JSON formatted event this is a custom event of a weather data where we are passing passing values like temperature, wind, kilometer per hour, humidity, pressure data. So in this way we can pass the JSON document as an event to the Lambda function. And this is another example of a service event which we, we are getting from Amazon SNS notification to the Lambda function. So here you can see from SNS, we are getting the timestamp, signature, message ID, and the actual message. So these are the examples of event. Now another concept is execution environment. So what is an execution environment? Execution environment provides a secure and isolated runtime for the Lambda function. An execution environment manages the processes and resources that are required to run the function. The execution environment provides lifecycle support for the function and for any extensions associated with the function. So to understand is better, Lambda is a serverless service for us but behind the scenes, the Lambda function runs in physical machines in AWS data centers. For the selected runtime of the Lambda function, an execution environment is prepared by AWS in the background to run the function. For example, if we choose Python as the runtime, AWS will configure the execution environment required to run Python code, initialize the required Python libraries and modules, etc. Now, what is instruction set architecture? The instruction set architecture means the type of computer processor that Lambda uses to run the function. As I said in the background, AWS runs the Lambda function in physical machines. So in the machine, 
what computer processor that the lambda is going to use is defined by instruction set architecture. Lambda provides following choices of instruction set architectures. First is ARM64, which is 64-bit ARM architecture for the AWS Graviton 2 processor. Another is x86 underscore 64, which is 64-bit x86 architecture for x86 based processors. So x86 architecture, this architecture is widely used in traditional desktop and server environments. It is the architecture used by most personal computers and servers. And ARM64 architecture is commonly found in mobile devices, embedded systems, and increasingly in data centers. It is known for its energy efficiency and is becoming more popular in cloud computing environments these days. Now, what is a deployment package? We deploy our Lambda function code using a deployment package. A deployment package refers to the bundle of code and any dependencies that we need to deploy and run a Lambda function. Lambda supports two type of deployment packages. First is a zip file archive that contains our function code and its dependencies. And another could be uh, a container image. So container image includes the base operating system, the runtime, lambda extensions, your application code and its dependencies. We can also add static data into the image. Now the next is runtime. The runtime provides language environment that runs in an execution environment. So we saw the execution environment in previous slide. Now Runtime is the environment specific to a language. We can use runtimes that Lambda provides or build our own runtime. For zip deployment package archive, you must configure your function to use a runtime that matches your programming language. And for a container image deployment package, you include the runtime when you build the image. Lambda supports multiple languages through the use of runtimes and each major programming language release has a separate runtime identifier for example node.js 20.x python 3.12 we choose the runtime when we create the function now another concept is layer so what is a layer a lambda layer is a zip file archive that contains additional code or other content Lambda layer is a distribution mechanism for libraries, custom runtimes, or other function dependencies. You can create Lambda layer containing libraries or code that you want to share across multiple Lambda functions. Lambda layer allows you to reduce the size of your deployment package, making it easier to manage and update common components across multiple functions. Lambda layers are versioned and you can reference a specific version of a layer in your Lambda function. For example, if you have a common library that is used by several Lambda functions, you can create a Lambda layer containing that library and then reference that layer in, in your individual Lambda functions, which helps to avoid duplication of code in each functions deployment package and simplifies maintenance using Lambda layer. Now another concept is extension. What is a Lambda extension? Lambda extensions enable you to augment your functions. So what is what do we mean by augment? The literal meaning of augment is making something greater by adding to it or increasing it. Lambda extensions augment the Lambda environment by running additional code and enhances the Lambda function capabilities by providing a way to run code that runs alongside and interacts with the main function code. For example, you can use extension to integrate your functions with your preferred monitoring, observability, security, and governance tools. For example, for monitoring, Datadog offers a Lambda extension that integrates with its monitoring and analytics platform. This extension allows to collect traces, metrics, and logs from your Lambda function providing comprehensive monitoring and observability. Now another concept is Lambda concurrency. So concurrency is the number of requests 
that the lambda function is serving at any given time. In simple terms, it refers to the number of executions of your lambda function that can happen simultaneously. You can configure individual lambda functions to limit their concurrency or to enable them to reach a specific level of concurrency. For example, if you set the concurrency limit of 100 for your lambda function, it means that up to 100 instances of your function can run simultaneously. If additional requests or events come in while the function is already processing the maximum number of concurrent executions, those additional requests may be throttled or queued until a slot becomes available. Adjusting the concurrency limit can impact the scalability and performance of your serverless application. However, concurrency limits allow more simultaneous executions, but it's essential to consider the overall resources available and potential costs associated with high concurrency. So keep in mind that AWS Lambda automatically scales based on incoming request rate. If your function doesn't have a concurrency limit set, it will scale automatically to handle incoming requests subject to account level limits. Setting a specific concurrency limit provides more control over the maximum number of concurrent executions for a particular function. Now another concept is lambda qualifier. When you invoke or view a function, you can include a qualifier to specify version or alias. In simple terms, qualifier is used to refer to a version or alias of a lambda function. For example, you might have versions 1, 2 and 3 of your lambda function. You can create an alias called production that points to version 2. Any references to the alias production will automatically use version 2 of the function. For example, my function colon 2, my function colon production points to the same version. So this my function colon 2 is the qualifier and colon production is a qualifier. Now the final concept is a destination. Destination is an AWS resource where Lambda can send events from an asynchronous invocation. So what is asynchronous invocation? Asynchronous invocation means when you invoke a Lambda function asynchronously, it means that the function call returns immediately without waiting for the function to complete. This is often used for background tasks or event driven processing. Destination. What is a destination? A destination is where the results of the asynchronous lambda function execution is sent. It could be another lambda function, an Amazon simple notification service, SNS topic, an Amazon simple queue service, SQS queue, or an AWS step function state machine. By using lambda destinations, you can specify whether the function result should be sent, where the function result could, should be sent allowing you to process or analyze the results independently from the original invocation. This can be helpful for scenarios such as logging, error handling, or triggering additional workflows based on the results of the initial function execution. For example, if you have a Lambda function processing uploaded files asynchronously, you might configure a destination to send the processing results to an SQS queue where another service can pick up the results and perform additional actions. So this was all about destination. So as we conclude this video, if you found the content useful, kindly show your support by giving it a thumbs up, leaving a comment, sharing it with others and subscribing for future videos. Thank you for your time.